PETA is smelling blood and water right now. Because they finally got something that can destroy hunting. Deer hunting is 80% of hunting in the United States. If I wanted to kill hunting, here's what I would do. I would convince the general public and sports men and women that venison was an unhealthy food item. And that's what they're doing. They're scaring the living daylights out of a lot of people. And it's totally unethical. <coughs> We've got, I'll talk about it later, We've got this, I'm tempted to use the word idiot, but oh, well. this guy over in uh, Minnesota, supposed to be a, a disease scientist retired that uh, uh, just put out a one page white paper with no documentation that, uh, that it was just a matter of time before a human being came down with CWD. And we'll talk about that later, which is nonsense. All right, so let's talk about, uh, I'm gonna give you information that I've developed, I'll give you information that, that my three co-authors developed. If you're looking at, at three of the finest scientists I've ever worked with, between the four of us, we have about 150, 170 years of experience. Uh, everybody on that group that, that came up with this science, the science behind CWD, the fact behind CWD, know what we're talking about. All right, let's talk about the basic facts about CWD. First of all, y'all know it stands for chronic wasted disease, right? Okay. It was given that name by, I knew her well, Beth Williams, who's deceased now from a car accident, and she uh, noticed it in the research pens of Colorado State back in the 60s, and it was, uh, had classic symptoms of some of the other wasting diseases, we'll talk about that. So she named it chronic wasting disease. Chronic is very important. She didn't call it acute wasting disease because it's something that develops slowly over time, right? over years sometimes. <laughs> All right, it's been found so far in, in elk, a deer, elk, reindeer, seca, uh, and gorilla, and one moose. One moose. And reindeer in Norway. And I used a slide yesterday that shows uh, we're going to ban Santa Claus from flying over Alabama because he uses reindeer. We wouldn't want him to contaminate Alabama anymore, would we? This picture shows up everywhere. When they when they put out a publication about chronic wasted disease, they have a real problem. Finding a picture of it here with chronic wasted disease. Because by my estimates, maybe in the last 30 years, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 deer and elk in the United States have succumbed to chronic wasted disease. In one year alone, hundreds of thousands of deer died from EHD. That picture was taken in Kansas, by the way. I finally found that word. All right, the agent of, of chronic wasted disease are called prions, and that's the way they're pronounced prions, not prions. They're pronounced prions. They're little molecules, protein molecules, that are in every one of us right now. They run up and down our cerebral spinal fluid, doing we don't really know what, but we think that they're, they're sort of the garbage men and the, and the maintenance of our neural system. What we think, right? Now, the prions themselves, they're, they're normal most of the time. They're water soluble. And they can become distorted like transformers by some agent. To this day, we do not know what that agent is. We have no idea. How this disease originates. I don't want anybody to tell you we do know because we do not know. But the distorted form still has the same molecular formula, although it might have a different metal in it. It becomes water insoluble. <clears throat> so when it gets up to the brain stem, it lodges up there. And over time, it starts to lodge more and more. This is a group of disease called transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. That's why we call them TSE. Okay? What that translates to is you, another individual can get it and it turns your brain to a sponge because of all that accumulation of erodible material in the brain. 
especially the brain stem, over time, you lose neural function, and all sorts of things happen to your body. But in most cases, it takes a very long period of time for that to come about. Okay. I already said all that. That's what the molecule looks like, by the way, supposedly. Now, humans, almost all mammals have prion diseases. It's not unique to what to deer. The ones that humans have are Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, group corresponds fossil Schreiner syndrome, and fatal familia insomnia. We also have Kuru, which is unique to New Guinea, where it's common among cannibals. So they eat brains of people. I don't think they do it anymore, but, but they did. But Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, is occurs in about one in a million. Manganese miners have twice the occurrence of Crossfield-Yakov's disease. It's two in a million. So a good headline would be that manganese miners have twice as much Crossfield-Yakov's disease as normal people. One more. Okay. We do. We see that a lot, don't we? About twice this, three times that, and we ask for the actual numbers. It's different. Okay. So humans have the Variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease is what they have attributed to uh, BSE, bovine spongiform cephalopathy, which is, I don't feel like to use the term mad cow disease, but here it to use that term, but called mad cow disease, that developed in, supposedly in cattle in England and Europe, mostly England, uh, by feeding uh, animal-based foods, sheep especially. Okay. Well, there are three kinds of all TSDs, including CWD, there are three types. All right? Uh, the one is, is caused by uh, about 80% of the time in, in humans, so we might extend that to the people. It's sporadic. It can show up anytime, anywhere. And we have these little isolated cases of CFD showing up around the country. And immediately the state agency sets their hair on fire and goes running down the street. But it may or may not be a, a, a deer that caught anything from anybody that's <coughs> radically developed. Okay? Another one is familial or genetic. There is a genetic relationship to all the TSs. And then the last one is lateral, which means you're exposed to contaminated humans like trans, uh, transfusions, things like that. Dirty surgical instruments or whatever. So those are the three types. Okay, uh, all animal prion disease except uh, variant cross-reductive disease have never been found to be transmissible to humans. Okay. The only exception is variant cross-reductive disease. How, how dangerous is variant Crossfield-Yakov's disease? It was found in, in 19, uh, mad cow disease was found in 1984. There's 720 million people in Europe. Since 1984, 229 people have developed variant Crossfield-Yakov's disease. In that same length of time, over 2,000 people were slipped and fell and died in their home <coughs> in Europe. Now, every human life is precious. But 229 out of 720 million how many millions of pounds of beef were eaten in Europe since 1984? That's, I'll take those risk factors. Sorry. So, take a bounce around here once in a while. All right, from CWD, the host distribution is gill deer, Rocky Mountain elk, white tail deer, Shire Smooth, and other susceptible species for Sika, red deer, mud jacks. Axis deer have never had it, fallow deer have never had it. They're just, they're not. They're not capable of All right, CFD was first discovered for Kathy Mule here at the Colorado, Colorado State Research Facility. Now, I want to debunk some stuff that I hear among deer breeders. Okay. That's not true. I'm an equal opportunity truth teller. Okay. Colorado State, it wasn't insidious. They didn't know they had it. They didn't even know the disease yet. They didn't uh, 
bring the sheep in or something to get it to them or whatever. They just, what they did is they were, they were doing a nutrition study so they went out, captured some mule deer in the Rocky Mountains, uh, those, pregnant goats, brought them in, let them fall, and let them go. Okay? And then as time went on, uh, Beth started, no and Mike uh, Miller started noticing some symptoms of a strange thing. So we don't know where it came from. But the first reported case was in a government research facility. Now, the only thing that irritates me is when I hear agency people, professional university people, say, just when they reported in the newspaper that a standard boilerplate was first discovered in a deer breeding facility in Colorado. <coughs> it's not what it's what's not been said, but it was a Colorado State research facility. <coughs> Without giving them any fault, they're innocent. They just okay. The first published article on CMD was by Williams in 1980. That's where she called it chronic wasting disease. In 1981, the first free ranging animal was found with CWD, a unique form elk version of it, because elk CWD and white tail CWD are different. Uh, so it was found an 18-month-old uh, bull elk in Rocky Mountain National Park. How it got infected, how it got there, nobody knows. Subsequently, it started showing up in a lot of places in Wyoming because they traded out some animals to different research bins and that sort of thing. Presently, as of February 2018, CWD has been found in 23 states, two Canadian provinces, in Korea, Norway, and Ben, that's a true statement. But what is not told is how much has been found there. For example, they're really going nuts in Minnesota right now, over 40 positive deer. Okay. How many deer, as a percentage, the number of deer that have been, that have tested positive for CWD is not a great number. But one of the things I want to dispel here is, is there is the impression that is falsely implied that CWD, I work with anthrax in deer. You don't want to do that. You end up taking a lot of antibiotics. Right? But anthrax is a disease, it's a bacterial disease, that one bacteria can infect the deer. Right? But the impression is the deer's walking along and there's a prion, a disease prion on the ground and it hops on the deer and, and infects him like that. That's not the way it happens. We'll, we'll find out later. It takes lots of exposure to get a deer to come out. Okay, <clears throat> according to the CDC, in 2012, more than a million surgeons have been reportedly tested for CWD and about 6,000 cases have been identified. So the prevalence rate of positive is 0.56%. Normal infection rates across populations of TSCs is in the 1 to 2% range. Right. Total farm surveillance, last time we had data, 170,120, 403 positives, 0.2%. Total wild service surveillance, 848,706 with 3,600 positives or 0.4%. It's about twice as prevalent in free ranging deer as it is in farm deer. Roughly. Total tested, 1,018,403 positive, 0.39%. I hope that puts it in perspective. But what are you reading and, and hearing and fearing? That it's just this rampant disease that is <coughs> go out and pick up deer at random and he's gonna have it. Uh, information from our Texas DBMDL lab from Texas samples from 2013 to 2018, 13 is when we discovered it in, a, in Medina County. Uh, 98,524 deer lost their lives, okay. 
and were tested for CWD with 87 positives, 0.88 percent. Now, as of yet, uh, before I left to come here, we had 144 and over 100,000 tests was 0.14 percent. All right, in the U.S., there are 3,144 counties. As of February 2018, there were 196 counties with CWD positive deer. Okay, that equals 6.2 percent of all the counties in the United States with CWD. Does that translate to rampant? Okay. That equals, uh, or in the U.S., uh, that also means that 93.8% of the U.S. counties are free of CWD. <coughs> I've subscribed to a friend of mine's name is Williams, Williams Law, that many a beautiful theory has been murdered by a ruthless gang of facts. Okay. In the 23 states, county Mississippi, that have CWD, there are 1,714 counties. So as of that time, there's 196 counties with CWD out of 1,714 in 23 positive states. That equals 11.4% of counties in the states that have CWD. Okay? That means that 88.6% of the counties are free in those states. If you counter to that would be, but what is? Well, what if this ceiling falls on us right now? We don't work on what if, we work on scientific facts. All right, in Michigan, you know, about to hear a lot about Michigan. There have been uh, 57 out of 30,000 tests. But I keep saying 30,000 deer that lost their lives. <coughs> How many innocent deer have been killed since all of this started? It went, oh. Didn't have it. Or excuse me, not the tip. Missouri, 58 out of 30, 323,456. Nebraska, 499 out of 51,000. By the way, I'll give you an anecdote here. This is hilarious about Kansas. They just got 37 positives out of their sample was 360. Well, there's a robust sample. 360. Wisconsin, what do I know a lot about them? 4,174 out of 209,700 deer. I have the records for every one of those 209,700 deer for Wisconsin. Wyoming gave the fish, that's probably the highest, 8.8%, 342 out of 3,883. So the bottom line on occurrence is prevalence rates of less than 1% for CFD like all other TSCs. That does not mean that there are not places where it's higher. That means that across the landscape, it's about what it is. Widespread also depends on the scale by which it's measured. The total states is 44%. By counties in the U.S., it is 6.2%. So a lot of times people will, <coughs> professional people, quotes around professional, we use the terms like like 40 something percent of state of the U.S. states have CWD, and that is true, but it's not also true. Okay, is CWD spreading, or is testing spreading? We don't know because we haven't been testing all these years, and so we're testing more and more. And guess what? As we test more and more, guess what happens? We find it. Okay. The increase in number can be attributed to three things. The first one is the natural movement of deer. Although I question that. DNA studies from areas where deer were transported, like Wisconsin to Georgia back in the restocking days, those genetics have stayed pretty well in the same place. Deer don't move very far. Buxton. And, and up in Michigan, where they're up there mismanaged, they will migrate. Now, white I mean, mule deer will move. Okay. The other one is transportation, translocation of deer involved in commerce has been put forward. 
There's not one shred of scientific evidence that backs that up. Could be true. I don't know. And then lastly, an increase in, in re required CWD testing, which I think can be attributed to the spread. The thing I want to really point out to you is CWD is not a captive deer problem or a free range deer problem. It is a deer problem. There's not one shred of evidence that deer breeders spread CWD. As a matter of fact, it's part of my work in Wisconsin. We got a letter from the state veterinarian that said of the three farms that had CWD within the CWD zone in southwestern Wisconsin, two of them had brought wild deer into their pens illegally. One of them was a taxidermist that received all sorts of skull plates and everything else. So they were they were deserved victims. Two of them were deserved victims because the person does something illegal I have no use for. Does anybody here know the difference between morbidity and mortality? Okay. Morbidity is having a disease. Testing positive for it. Mortality is dying from it. Now, an MD told me one time something I'll never forget. He said, James, you are many times more likely to die with prostate cancer than from it. And so if something, just because something is test positive, as Dr. Davis said, if it tests positive, it does not translate to mortality. Magic Johnson? Yeah, Magic Johnson, there you go. He should be dead. Okay. Most of the animals that test positive <coughs> from farms were either euthanized or they died from DHD, hit the fence, whatever. Does that mean if they tested positive, does that mean that they died from e, from CFD? No. As a matter of fact, my colleague Horace Gore said this when he first showed up in southwestern Wisconsin. He said, he said, Roll. By the time a deer can become clinical of CWD, it's been killed and eaten by something for two years. And along the way, she has two, three sets of palms at least. <coughs> okay, uh, there's a clinical case of CWD in Texas with over four and a half million deer, over 100,000 captive services, never been observed. Some professionals may tell you that there was a mule deer in El Paso that died from CWD. My colleague, Ken Walter, animal health, did the autopsy on that, on that doe, and she died from pneumonia. Do deer die of CWD? I'm sure they do. But the, but the uh, generation time in white-tailed deer is three and a half years. That means the herd turns over every three and a half years. Okay. And even this is what's interesting, even a 1% CWD mortality rate, there should be 45,000 dead wild deer and 1,000 captive wild deer in Texas right now. In South uh, Wisconsin, there should be 85,000 dead deer right now. That'd be a smell, wouldn't it? When we were, when I was the deer czar of Wisconsin, we asked them for the necropsy reports of all the deer that had died from CWD. We got 22 initially, and only like two even had CWD. Finally, we ended up getting 100, but the vast majority of them did not die from CWD. They're going to die by something else long before they can become clinical. I've already said that now. 85,380 should be laying out their dead. Okay, this is the most important thing. If you go away from nothing, with nothing else but this, from this talk, please remember this. CWD is not a density dependent disease. Where would the next case of swine flu occur? In Birmingham or Pentlock? Probably Birmingham, wouldn't it? Why? 
There's a lot of people mixing, getting close to each other. That's not the way CWD works. CWD is a frequency dependent disease. It, a deer has to be exposed to it over and over and over again. How do they do that? I think, personally, I think that it's in doe groups. Doe groups, which I spent 40 something years studying, they are mothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, grandmothers. They are a tightly knit social unit. They don't let other deer come into their social unit. They spend a lot of time leaking on each other. And they're probably the reservoir that, that has it. Their yearling buck leave and probably take some with them. But it is a frequency dependent disease. What does that mean? That means you can kill deer till the cows come home and you're not going to get rid of it. Depopulating, other than in a captive herd, is worthless. It will not do a thing. Hundreds of thousands, maybe a million, over a million deer have died needlessly. In an effort, we killed 172,000 by 2012 in southern Wisconsin. Guess what we still have in southern Wisconsin? CWD. So I hope that these guys, these agencies, will sooner or later realize this. And that's not an opinion, that's backed up by published scientific evidence. Okay? Okay, so it's frequency dependent disease. That's by Janelle. That's the paper if you want to go look it up. It could be transmitted by indirect through environmental contamination. Freons are noted for being able to hang around a long time. However, there are farms in England that now have healthy herds of cattle that once had bad cow disease. So we don't really know if they'll stay out there forever. We do know that there's some things about soil characteristics that affect their ability to maintain themselves. Lately, uh, somebody got all excited about humic acid. The humic acid may, may have a decaying effect on prions. Also, clay soils tend to hold prions longer than sandy soils. <coughs> so there's some soil relationship. The other thing is, who knows? We don't know. And USDA said the same thing I just said. We don't know the roots of transmission. We know a lot about doing Frankenstein experiments, drilling holes in deer brain, deer skulls, living deer skulls, and monkeys, and all kinds of stuff, and cramming all kinds of horrible agents in their brain. We know a lot about that, but we don't have a clue. The agent. All right, I'm just repeating myself about Frankenstein experiments. Science is and should be based on demonstrable data. Words like believe, likely, suggest, perhaps, do not belong in a scientist's mouth. Could be. Words I should never say. But when you start using those as a scientist, people don't hear the could or should or might. All they hear is, you're going to die. There's a difference between possibility and probability. Y'all know the difference between that, I bet you. It's the probability that means everything. In Europe right now, what's your probability of contracting variant Crohn's disease based on the data? You one in one in a lot. Okay. You win a lot before you get that. In this case, lose a lot. Let's look at some of the Frankenstein experiments. This is the science program that a lot of stuff is based on today. All right, this is a study done where a single whitetail fawn experimentally injected intravenously with 250 milliliters of blood from a CWD positive deer. And two other fawns injected intraperitoneally in the abdomen, right, with 250 milliliters of blood from CWD positive deer. All three fawns became COD positive by 18 months post-injection. Where in nature does this happen? Possibility versus probability. But that one gets thrown around a lot. 
Saliva is one that, let's look at modes of transmission, urine, feces, and saliva, and I'll talk about semen as well. Okay? All right, three fogs, one died from being from the treatment. Okay? Were orally inoculated with 50 milliliters of urine and feces over three days. Inoculated, you may translate that for you? They crammed it down their throat. Okay? The two remaining fogs, the one that did die from having it done, <coughs> were CWD negative at 180 days. Saliva, which is probably the mode of transmission. Study they did there, three phones were orally exposed to 50 milliliters of saliva from infected deer. By 180 days post exposure, all three phones were CWD positive. 50 milliliters. Where in nature, free ranging deer, does that happen? No prions have ever been isolated from the semen of any ruminant animal, whether it be cattle, sheep, goats, or deer. But when CWD shows up, what's one of the first things they want to ban? Semen. They don't ban it with scraping and sheep. They don't ban it with DSC and cattle. And then, of course, they come back and they want to, they want to ban urine, lures. What did I just show you? Now, urine cooler don't work. I'll show you after a while, a little bit, so they don't work. But I'm not against them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's good. Feel good? <coughs> okay. Freons are shed at very low numbers in feces and urine. And can only be detected, can only be detected by special amplification techniques. Okay? You have to amplify the devil out of it to even find out if they're there. Okay? Let's look at bodily fluids and tissues. This is where you're going to find the most prions. From the, the most likely down to the lowest. The brain, the carcass, the lymph, t lymph tissues, bone meat, digestive tissues, blood and saliva. That's an order. Feces. Urine. The, the guy that studied it said recently that it would take 33 gall thousand gallons of urine to get an effective dose of freon. That's a lot of shelf space from Walmart, isn't it? <laughs> the most meaningful experiment, in my opinion, professional opinion, ever done on this whole thing was done fairly early on in 2004 by Mike Miller and his bus. They experimentally placed nine CWD, nine mule deer, and three pins. Okay? Uh, of the three that contained mule deer carcasses that died from CWD, 19% of them became infected. Experimentally, three more groups, three deer each, CWD naive deer, okay, placed in pens. One set of three pens that had been occupied by CWD infected animals two years before. Another set of three pens with CWD carcass. And the third one with a CWD infected animal. A total of 16% of the CWD naive deer in the three experimental conditions and nine pens became infected after one year. And 84% did not become infected. Here is the table from his results. The, the number on the left side is how many became infected and the other one is how many deer. So the one with infected deer, two deer out of ten became infected. Of the 
affect your carcass three out of 12, residual waste one out of nine, and I'm the CO2. Bottom line is it takes a lot of exposure for them to come down with CWD. And there may be some natural resistance. Uh, for those of y'all <coughs> hanging on genetics, we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, what about fetal transmission? There has been one study that showed that it can be transmitted to a fetus across the placenta, right? What about predators and scavengers and plants? These are probably two of the most nauseating experiments I've seen. If they have, how, how long did the crow thing fly across America? You know, the crows could transmit it. Possibility versus probability. And that last one about grass and plants is totally ridiculous. It's not, it's not gonna be transmissible through plants. We got a lot of snake oil out right there and a lot of unresponsible people and they're not just on the, the people who are against what you do, some of your own folks. Or the other side. Oh, what did it say about the coyotes? It said that the prions are. <clears throat> the prions are uh, no longer active when they go through your digestive system of coyotes? Yep. What is it in the digestive system of a coyote that makes a prion inactive? That's what we need to do. Those are the kinds of research we need to do. That, that, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. There's all kinds of research we need to do. But. I already talked about this guy. Well, we saw it all. It, I've, I've rounded up some of the fine photographs and images that we're using. It could slowly eat away your brain. Probably happen to the people who drink beer. More. <laughs> all right, let's talk about human transmission. Okay? With CWD show up in Wisconsin, three outdoor magazines, three prominent outdoor magazines reported that three men had died from eating venison. That later was totally debunked by the CDC. We lost 12% of our hunters in Wisconsin. We never got them back, and most of them were young people. Today they're playing golf. Mama was standing on the porch saying, you ain't bringing that deer in here and killing my kids. It was all based on a total lie. I'm convinced I told this to their face. There's some guys in Wisconsin that are just nerdy wells. That if a human being ever contracted chronic waste of food, they would throw a cocktail party. They want it that bad. What would that do to hunt? Anyway, it's proved patently false. From the CDC. Didn't happen. Right? However, Let's talk about this study in Canada that got so much press. You know what that study was? You know, a scientific study is putting a journal in peer review and all that sort of stuff, right? This was a PowerPoint presentation given in, in Canada. These guys claimed that they had managed to get CWD infection in macaques, which are supposedly genetically closer to humans than any of the other monkeys, okay? But it never was published. On the other hand, National Institutes of Health did a long-term study that said we can't infect with macaque monkey work. If we look at other things like we've been monitoring cultural disease in southwestern Wisconsin since 2002, it hasn't gone up. Uh, the uh, Colorado has been monitoring it now for, uh, through people from 1970 to 2001. They looked at people in the instances of cross disease in seven infected counties and saw no increase in, it, in the, anything that looks like cross or chronic waste disease. Here are the scientific papers that show that it, that they have not been able to transmit CWD. These are scientific papers. And this last one's done at the University of California, San Diego, showed that, that the human prion has a different shape 
that the deer prey on. And in order for those proteins to reproduce themselves, they have to line up and do some things. It's like saying that it, it's possible, it's like having a zipper that on one side has great big teeth and on the other side has little bitty teeth. Or you go zip your pants. No. You know, a lot of these studies that have been done, like I said, are intracranial injections with all kinds of nasty stuff in animal brains. I don't support that. That is an animal welfare issue. It's just not right. Okay. Yeah. Somebody say something? Oh. <laughs> yes, ma'am. They also use transgenic mice. Do you all know what transgenic mice is? It's not a new, uh, not a new social group in the United States. It's <laughs> transgenic mice. <laughs> There are mice that have been, had their genetics manipulated to be like humans or like deer. We've been able to transmit it to, to mice, that, transgenic mice that are like deer, but not to those who are like humans. That's just another, another way to look at it. Not one single case of CMD has ever been found in humans, <coughs> despite the tens of thousands of CMD test positive deer and elk being ingested by people. I'll guarantee you, I've eaten some. You may think that I have very cross oxygen disease, but I think it has something to do with my age. I already told you about it, I talked ahead of myself on the McCock study. More snake oil and unethical or irresponsible people. Spiroplasms. How many of y'all just heard about that? Savior of the entire industry. <clears throat> Guy's been talking about it for 20 years. Nobody's ever been able to reproduce his work. Okay? We're gonna have a vaccine right away. Whoa, bounce around, let me go back. We're gonna have a vaccine right away. Save all the deer breeders in the world. What does it take to get a vaccine approved? He said in, in one to two years, they're gonna save our industry. First of all, experimental data in a vaccine study showing efficacy has to be completed, that takes years, right? Complete the application, protection efficacy experiments have to be completed, takes several more years. Submitted for a complete license, which applies to just that one host species. You have to do that for each species. Vaccines do not cure anything. They give some resistance. There's no such thing as a vaccine that gives 100% resistance. You had your flu shot? Did you get the flu? Okay. There's no such thing as 100%. Right? Secondly, it doesn't cure anything. The prions eat holes in the brain. Brain tissue does not regenerate. A vaccine is not going to cause the brain to regenerate the holes. But everybody ran with that. How would you get it in the free range deer? We've tried the rabies thing. We've done some fairly decent stuff with the scotch and bait, but did we get them all? Do we still have rabies? Yeah, we still have rabies. It might be useful to farm deer. But it's going to, if it, if it were, which it's not, chiroplasms, it would be several years before you could do it. Lots of things have been hypothesized to cause prions. Dr. Stewart, y'all know Dr. Stewart, he came up with some of these. Manoides, small virus, mycobacterium avium, LPS from Enterobacteriaceae, Interruption of ret retinal acid pathways, aromonas and shigella, mineral aberrations. There is some tie, maybe, between copper deficiency. Was copper deer or copper hog? You feed sheep and deer feed, what are you going to do? You're going to kill them, okay? Deer or copper hogs. In the absence of copper, maybe, they substitute a heavy metal. There's something that that's the research that needs to be looked at. Right? But we deer breeders 
and I've been doing this since 1975. We deer breeders are always looking for magic bullets, okay? And so you come up with these feeds that can cause disease. Here's an example. I work a lot with the Amish people. Love working with them. They're great. They're honest. Uh, but I gave a talk to them one time, and I talked about the importance of selenium to white tail deer. If we go to a deer who's throwing the velvet and take plugs out of out of the antler, as we've done, the developing ends of the leaves are high in selenium. Selenium is necessary for cell division and a whole bunch of metabolic processes. Right? It's also a great antioxidant. So from that, they came up with their own special feed. And the next thing you know, one of the most famous deer in America at that time comes down with heavy metal disease. So I had to go there, hoist him up, and transfuse him a zillion times to wash his system out to get the heavy metal out of him when we say it. All of these exotic feeds and stuff y'all come up with, stop it. I've been using the same formula for 40 years. And I've been growing 400 inches. Okay. Sorry for the rant here. Genetics. I've been very interested in the genetics of this. I already said there may be a genetic propensity of uh, organisms for <coughs> TSE. So let's talk about genetics. The genes for resistance to CMD infection have not been identified. No matter what you may have heard, they have not been identified. Okay? They have in sheep and goats for scraping. And the sheep and goat breeders have bred themselves pretty much out of the scraping problem. We are a long ways from that. Okay? There are more susceptible genomes that have been correlated, but there has been nothing developed yet that gives us hope for it. However, that is one of the low-hanging fruit, important research projects we need to do. And guess who's not doing any of it? University people, all the people that have a state in CFD. CFD is a cash cow. We spent $100 million in Wisconsin trying to eradicate it. A lot of that $100 million went to scientists, university scientists, agencies. They've got 40 positive deer in Minnesota. They just allocated about $4.5 million to the agencies, to cash cows. You're getting good cash cows, and you want to cure something. If you add in there, they're not liking you guys. They're not, they're not going to do anything. Any CWD resistance conferred by genotype study was not complete. It was incomplete. At best, so far, the ones we've looked at may put it off a while. But there is no such thing right now as a gene that is resistant to it. Am I standing here saying there is no such thing? No. Right now, we don't have one identified. So, Long Ranger's not coming. Not in the near future. The infected individuals with those, with those genotypes are still shedding prions. We don't even know what is an infected dose of prions. Now, as a, as a person who taught wildlife diseases, wouldn't it be logical that we would have to know what dose of a pathogen an animal has to be exposed to for them to become diseased? We don't have a clue. What I tell you is the perception is often put forward. Deer's walking along, and three on here jumps on him, he's sick. Same way with, this is not a prion disease. I work a lot with tuberculosis in, in deer in Michigan. Tuberculosis, deer are very resistant to tuberculosis. When they're, when they're susceptible to it is when their body condition goes down or they're stressed. 
when that guy a few years ago was on a plane and he had a resistant form of tuberculosis and oh god the news media everybody in that plane was going to come down and spread it all over the world not a single person came down with tuberculosis why because it was an american plane and almost everybody on that plane was very healthy so animals and people are resistant to disease except except anthrax I keep coming back to that. I don't want anthrax. I've, I've had it killed 95% of my deer population. Now What a smell. It was terrible. Okay. Here, what, here's the summary of what I'm going to say. If an individual deer of a species susceptible to CBD is exposed to a sufficient number, unknown number, of infectious CO prions, morbidity and mortality may be induced after somewhere between 17 months and four years. Oh, turn around, turnover time is three and a half years. Okay? After the onset of clinical signs caused by the disease is usually fatal and rapidly so. Although we rarely see them because they never live long enough to die from it. Number two, CWD is a fairly rare disease with a prevalence less than 1% and over a million deer tested nationally in the last 20 years. At a prevalence of 11.2% in 196 CWD positive counties in the 23 CWD positive states. After 30 years, the CWD test positive prevalence rates in a few states have been reported to be as high as 35 to 40% in very isolated areas. Even in Wisconsin, I don't have any infection rates in any county of 35, 40%. My biggest one would be Iowa County, which is, I think, 23%. Okay. All right, CWD test positive. If an animal tests positive for CWD, it, it, it uh, says that there's morbidity. That's all it says. So you can't, if 10% of the deer in your pens test positive, it does not necessarily mean that 10% of them are going to die from CWD. That's important to remember. CWD has continued to be found in new areas since the 1960s. This is a function of increased surveillance and testing. Right? Natural animal movement, commercial movement, and occasional spontaneous genetic mutation. So, you got people like up in uh, Wisconsin that have double fences that are at the highest level of testing and have tested longer than anybody else, any other deer breeder in the United States. Suddenly, one day, they come down with a positive. Where did it come from? We don't know. So, you can be bitten and be as pure as a driven snow, but you can be bitten. Okay. In spite of the expenditure of $100 million of public money and thousands of animals killed, none of prevention, control, or eradication methods employed by various states since 1998 have been effective. The question to always ask is, what's your plan? What are your metrics for measuring success? And what is your end game? You ask those three questions, guess what answers you get? Crickets. Crickets. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Ask them the next question. Where can you point to where someone has eliminated CWD by eradication? They'll now say, well, over there in Norway, those, those uh, reindeer, they killed, killed them out and it's gone. Two problems. That's a herd animal in an open habitat. Easy mark. The other one is, how do we know it's gone? So it's never been done. It's neither a wild deer or a captive deer disease. My personal opinion is that deer farmers are the victims of all this, not the perpetrators. There are some small population studies out there in Wyoming, field deer and whitetails, where they claim to show a decrease in population due to CFD. However, here's the problem. It's in a very hostile place. <clears throat> Secondly, they predicted all this with a computer model. How do you like the weather model? <clears throat> it has assumptions in it. 
the last one is the factual stuff, is that out there in that area, the, the Bureau of Land Management has changed its grazing practices, so it's not good habitat anymore. Elk mania has spread elk all over everywhere. One elk is eight white-tailed deer. Okay? Elk are a nuisance. I feel pretty strongly about that. Okay? EHD is killing them off like crazy. And the whole suites of predators have increased dramatically. Mountain lions, I, I hunted uh, three years ago for the show out of Wyoming. Everywhere I went were lion carcass, lions would kill carcass. Lions were running rampant. Coyotes, man, you've got coyotes over here. When I started my career, you did. So you've got a lot of uh, extenuating circumstances that they don't discuss. Computer models are predictions, not known facts. Since CWD is, is a frequency dependent disease in wild deer, instead of density dependent, the benefits of supplemental feeding in most cases far outweigh any possible problems. That study has never been done. It needs to be done. In Michigan, we're now looking at, in TB, we're looking at, at spreading our deer out to supplemental feeding. If we have with food plots and with proper management, we have reduced tuberculosis where I'm working from 12% to the so I think management is one of the things that's the wrong way out. All right, I told you we don't know the, the modes of transmission for CWD. <coughs> that's the summary. Okay? Well, what I'd like to do is take about a 10 minute break and we can answer questions while, but then I want to talk about deer. <coughs> Some pretty stuff. <coughs> 